The following podcast was recorded on Thursday, December 9th, 2021, featuring Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. To hear the podcast in real time, you can sign up for a free trial at biancoresearch.com or arborresearch.com or by emailing Gus Handler directly at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. You can also call Arbor Research and Trading at 1-800-606-1872. Thanks for your time and enjoy the podcast. Welcome everybody to the latest edition of Talking Data. I'm your host, Kristen Radish of Arbor Research and Trading, joined today by our presenter, Jim Bianco of Bianco Research. Today, we're gonna to be talking about the shipping crisis, Jim. Despite statements to the contrary, the supply chain is not getting any better and demand it is an all time high. What can you tell us? Yeah, um, this is a somewhat of a controversial call because a lot of people have just de facto said, oh, the supply chain is improving. But I think what we first need to do is define exactly what the problem is. So <laughs> if we go to the first chart, the problem is very simple. Demand for stuff, durable goods, it's off the scales. So this chart shows you in purple the amount of durable goods that we buy um, on an annualized basis every month up, up to date on an annualized basis. And the gray line on the top panel is just the uh, a linear regression. Basically take your ruler and just draw a line as to what the trend has been. And the bottom line is what <laughs> they call residuals. And what the residuals show is that we are way above trend. Now, as an industry, this stuff making industry, whether it's China or the United States and production and then the supply chain, assumes the current trend will continue. So they'll expand it, but at the pace of the current trend. You don't expand it too fast because it's a waste of money. You expand it too slow, you have some kind of a problem. What was not expected was this giant surge. Now, why do we have the surge? 2020, we didn't spend any money. We were locked down. There's been a lot of stimulus. There's been unrealized profits from financial markets and house prices booming. But whatever the case is, we have seen a giant surge. So if we go to the next chart, the next chart shows that the shipping car, the supply chain has been uh, has been responding to this. And so what it shows is the number of TOEs, those are these, these boxes that look like the back of a semi that are put on the trucks uh, that are being unloaded at the Long Beach and the Los Angeles port. 40% of all of it runs through those ports. And there's a very simple reason. In the shipping industry, the bigger the ship, the um, the bigger the ship, the more economic it is. And some of these new sh um, uh, ships, these new container ships are the size of aircraft carriers. And only the Long Beach and Los Angeles ports can handle them. You can't send them to Oakland. You can't send them to Seattle or Vancouver. They're too big to go through this Panama Canal. Savannah can handle them, but they've got to back up too um, as well. So we're seeing the amount of activity at the Long Beach port where they can handle these giant ships at records. So when we talk about a bottleneck, I think really what we need to understand is that it, that's a technically true statement, but better is we're at the limits of capacity. We are buying stuff, we are ordering from Amazon at such a breakneck pace that the whole system cannot keep up. So it will expand over time, but not immediately. So what we really would need for the supply chain problem to go away is a reduction of demand. Now, maybe we get that, but that's not the way everybody wants it to be because that's a fancy way of saying the economy slows and more unemployment comes or less employment comes and people stop wanting to buy stuff because they feel a little unsure about their current situation. That's not the way we want to see it happen. But in lieu of where we are, record demand, straining supply chains to keep up, that's about the only way we're going to get it back in the balance unless we get higher prices to basically destroy or reduce some of that demand to balance it off. So speaking of higher prices, the container shipping profits are booming right now. How do you think yes. we're gonna, what incentive do they have to fix this problem? <clears throat> so let's go to the next chart. Um, and the next chart is, a, is, a, is a, a map. And the map shows basically, um, it, it shows this SQ, SAQA safety air quality area. That is 150 miles around Los Angeles. On November 11th, they announced 
that they were going to tell the ships that used to be anchored in San Pedro Bay, which is the Bay of Los Angeles, you can't be anchored there anymore because there's safety and environmental concerns, move 150 miles offshore. So what you can see from inside that area, that SAQA area, it's very few container ships. This just shows container ships. And outside of that area is a ton of container ships. And then you can see on the bottom part of the graphic that the container ships are spread all over the Pacific Ocean all the way back to Japan <laughs> as well too. So they keep coming out and saying, well, the problem's being solved. The number of ships waiting is falling all of the time. Well, no, it's not. You told them to go 100, 200 miles offshore. And then you said, well, there's no ships in the, in the harbor. So therefore no one's waiting, problem fixed. It actually isn't been fixed. And actually, if you calculate in, and Freight Waves, the, the trade journal of the uh, shipping industries does this, if you calculate in all those ships that are 100, 200 miles offshore waiting, we're at a record. We're at a record backlog right now. Um, now, if we go to the next chart, the question is, what is the shipping industry going to want to do about this backlog? The answer is absolutely nothing. This shows their profits. They're rolling four quarter or yearly profits going back to 2006. Prior to this year, the best year that they've ever had, they made like $12 billion. 14 shipping companies made $12 billion in a year. That was their best year ever. They're on pace this year to make $72 billion. This has been insane, the amount of money that they're making. Why? Because when you put your container box on their ship and they're told, to stay 150 miles offshore, and it might be a month before you can come in and unload, those shipping companies get paid every single day that they're waiting. Well, uh, you pay them every day with your box on their ship if it takes them one day to get to port or if it takes them two months to get to port. So these shipping companies, if you go to the next chart, are more than happy in order to keep the status quo. And this shows you who they are, Costco, it's not the uh, place where you go buy toilet paper. It's actually China Overseas Shipping Company. It's the big Chinese company. Um, uh, AP Moller Maersk is the big Denmark company as well too. They alone are $25 billion in profit as well too. So the shippers are having <coughs> really no um, incentive to do anything about this problem. Yeah, they are concerned about it. And then they just, just it's an embarrassment of riches for them. And how do the shipping stock returns compared to Bitcoin? Yeah, if you look at the next chart, this is the shipping stock index. Now, the thing about the shipping stocks, I put the countries on there. You'll notice there's no American companies. All the shippers are foreign countries. It's up 10x. It's up 10x since its March low. This index was at 40 at its March 2020 low, and it's gone over 500 earlier this year, and it's about 500 right now. So if you flip to the next chart, what it shows is I took the last day of the I took the last day of the pandemic recession, April 30th, 2020. The shipping stocks are up 767%. Bitcoin's up 400%. The FANG stocks, which everybody thinks has been a brilliant play for the last two years, up 113%. And the SP's up 60. So if you know what has been the single best idea in 2021 that no one talks about has been shipping they are just making so much money the best thing that ever happened to them is this supply chain crisis they they are minting money their stocks are reflecting it they're beating bitcoin in terms of being as uh, an investment that you could make and a lot of people again don't know this because none of these are american companies a lot of these are chinese companies and they're they're all foreign companies as well too so really what i'm arguing here is there's zero incentive from the shippers to fix this problem. And if you don't get the shippers on board, you're really going to have a very difficult time trying to fix the supply chain crisis because it starts with them. So much of our stuff comes from the Pacific or the Asian countries on the other side of the Pacific, especially China. And the shippers, if they're not going to be, you know, they'll give you a good word. They'll tell you how concerned they are about it. But boy, it's been such a great thing for them that they're going to do very little about it. So the only fix is the higher prices slow down that record demand. I know a lot of people in the financial markets like to say, well, the Fed can't do anything about this. The Fed can't print more ships. 
Well, no, we have record demand because of overstimulation. The Fed could cool that record demand if they if they want to, and they should, because even though lower wage workers are getting raises, they're not keeping up with inflation. So they're relatively worse off because of the inflation surge. Well, thank you, Jim, for your thoughts today. And thank you everyone for joining us. As a reminder, Arbor Research and Trading is an institutional research and brokerage firm. Our two most prominent offerings are Bianco Research and Arbor Data Science. For any questions, please contact Gus Handler at gus.handler at arborresearch.com. Have a great day.